Okay, so this brings us to our very last topic in I'm doing the Australian syllabus, so from Year 7 Algebra here in Australia. Now, this is the bit that trips up some people, and I notice especially because this is a precursor for equations and setting up algebraic expressions based on worded questions. This gets a lot of people, which is totally understandable because we're now we're not only just doing mathematical drilling, we're actually using our literacy to apply this to worded problems and try to get the important bits of information out and write an algebraic expression here. So I've got two questions here just pulled straight out of a textbook. And this these questions require us to write expressions for each of the following. So part A, we want to write an expression for the total cost in dollars of 10 bottles if each bottle costs X dollars. So I'm going to highlight the kind of key bits of information. That's that I've been given 10 bottles and each bottle costs X dollars. So if I look at this and I want to, and we do this to be able to set something up where we can just substitute in different values for, um, for bottle price and or anything that we need. I'll, I'll show you in a minute, but here we have 10 bottles and each costs X dollars. So based on this information, we know that, well, there's gonna be 10 lots because we have 10 bottles. And if, well, actually, let me write this. Let me take this a little bit slower. So one bottle costs X dollars. If I have 10 bottles, 10 bottles, these will cost 10 lots of X dollars. Now I'm returning to this idea we talked about in the previous video of that kind of like primary school, elementary school knowledge of if we have this piece of information, one bottle costs X dollars, taking 10 bottles, that's taking 10 lots of X dollars. Now, if we take lots of, if you remember this from elementary school, this is where we look at timesing. So I can write this out slowly actually to give you a nice short form idea, but this is like saying if one bottle costs X dollars, I have, this is the price for one. Now for 10 bottles, I'm gonna get X plus X plus the cost of another bottle X plus the cost of another bottle X plus the cost of another bottle X. Sorry, I'm gonna be writing a few, whoops. I'm gonna be writing a few of these here. Plus another bottle, plus another bottle, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus another, plus another, plus another. So each of these represents one bottle. So 10 bottles, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 lots of the bottle. So 10 lots of X dollars, sorry, I should say. And we can rewrite this in a simpler way because we learn in primary school that instead of just writing the same number and adding it, we can multiply this. So we have 10 lots of X dollars. Now I'm just avoiding writing the dollar sign because what I end up getting, I can just pop the dollar sign on at the end. Now with algebra, we learned that a short form way of writing this is going to be 10 
x. So to express this thing, the cost of 10 bottles with each bottle costing x dollars, I can just write this as 10 lots of x dollars. So I can now apply my formula and I can find different costs depending on the different bottle price. Say I brought one bottle, which was, which was the price of, well, let's say the price of the bottle in question was $3. So we write, let the cost of the bottle be three. So three dollars. All I do here, I have now an algebraic expression for my cost of 10 bottles. Now, the only thing that changes is the number, the actual cost is going to change based on the price here, based on each bottle costs X dollars. Now we can change this depending on the bottle. So say, I don't know, this was a bottle of Coke, for example. So I don't know, roughly $3. Our price is going to be 10 times three. As each bottle is $3. That gives me $30. Now, so what if we had, I don't know, the cost of the bottle, maybe this was a bottle of beer instead of Coke. Now, some of you, if you're over 18, you'll know that when you go and buy, buy a bottle of beer, it's gonna cost a lot more than say a Coke would. Um, so cost of bottle is, let's say this is $9. Sorry, I should write my dollar signs here as well. Now, I've bought a beer bottle, so my price changes. The number I'm substituting into my expression changes from three to nine. So each of these end up getting substituted into the X. And the nine can also get substituted into the X. Now, here, if I'm looking at maybe 10 bottles of beer, I have 10 times nine. That gives me $90. So my price changes based on the bottle. Now this is all just extra stuff. This is to show you what we can kind of do with these once we've written out our expression. The main thing I was trying to get us to is this point. This is our this is how we take the written information and write it as an algebraic expression. Now let's look at question two, the total cost in dollars of hiring. We want to find an expression for the total cost in dollars of hiring a plumber for N hours. Okay. So that's an important thing. This is our pro numeral, our unknown. Now a plumber charges a $30 call out fee. So this means that this is a price that's outside of the number of hours worked. So the plumber charges you $30 just for coming to your house. So whether the job takes one hour or eight hours, the plumber is always going to get that $30. This is just a fee you pay for them coming out to your house in the first place, plus $60 per hour. Now, this is a slightly wordier question and we're going to take this quite slowly. So we have, I'm going to write this down here again. Question two, whoops. Question two. So we have a plumber working for N hours. We have a $30 call out fee. and $60, so you charge $60 per hour. Okay, so let's look at the first 
thing we can break down. So let's look at this $30 call out fee. Because we said that this isn't going to change. This is going to be what the person makes any time or like regardless of the job. So our plumber is going to make $30. Oh, let's we'll write it without the, um, the dollar signs assumed. Our final cost is going to be in dollars. Now I'll just pop that at the end. I'm more focused on the algebraic expression here. So he makes $30 plus $60 per hour. So $60, $60 sorry, for each hour worked. So once again, he has a certain, he or she has a certain amount of money they're making, $60 for each hour. So I can write this as 60 times N because one hour is going to make person makes $60 for two hours. The person makes 60 times two. So $60 plus another $60. And we can write that as two lots of $60 and once again, three hours makes 60 times three. So for N hours, and N just represents any number, we can see a pattern happening here. For N hours, the person makes 60 lots of N. So the amount of hours worked is just going to multiply by the cost per hour. And that's how we get this particular expression here. So our expression becomes thirty. Now we've written this expression. We've written it already, but I'm just going to write it again here is going to be thirty dollars plus sixty times n dollars here. This is our expression. So we've taken all of these words, total cost in dollars of hiring a plumber for n hours, the plumber charges a thirty dollar call out fee plus sixty dollars per hour. We've written this as an expression and we can find how much the plumber makes for different numbers of hours worked. So for different values of N. Now let's add like a part A and B to this question. So we can say how much earned. I'm writing this in just a shorthand question. So um, the grammar may be a little off, but we can say how much did the plumber earn for six hours of work. So to do this, my N, we said before, my N represents the number of hours worked. So this number six is going to get substituted into the N here. So we get my total amount of money the plumber is going to make is going to be 30 plus 60 times 6. So my 60 times 6, that's going to give me $360 and my $30 because we said before the plumber is going to make $30 regardless. This is just an added cost for the plumber just turning up to your house and we get $390. So 
Once we have our expression, this is our bread and butter. This is our like most important feature because once we have an expression, we can find a amount earned for any hours. So by taking these words, making them into an algebraic expression with the unknown, with the pronumeral N being the number of hours worked, we can find a cost for 20 hours, for 30 hours, for 15. It doesn't really matter. What we need is our expression here. So that is how we can take these word problems, these sentences, deconstruct them, break them down, and make them into algebraic expressions and apply the algebra that we've learned so far. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.